don't have ambition. Many people are moved by stories of famous individuals who harbored ambition from an early age, acted to seize opportunities, and succeeded. And so, they adopt their own dreams and ambitions, but wake up simply having dreams and ambitions, doesn't mean everything will come true. Everyone dreams of success, so why are only a few people successful? The reason is that while many people have solid and grand dreams, they tend to overlook and ignore the very small steps required to achieve them. It's like someone wanting to travel from Seoul to Pusan, staring at Pusan through a telescope, but finding the first steps out the door meaningless and not moving at all. Let go of vague dreams and ambitions. Don't set goals for 10 years or even 5 years down the line. By then, you'll be exhausted. Set goals for about a year ahead, like saving 10 million won, which is modest but specifically actionable. Once you have such a goal, you can calculate exactly how much to save from your income and for how long. This way, you'll have a concrete action plan. Then, all that's left is to act according to that plan. If you do, soon enough, you'll have a substantial amount of money. That lump sum will become the seed money, allowing you to step onto the first rung of the ladder to wealth. Remember, the winner in the game of Wealth building is the one who raises their value and acquires seed money the fastest. The same applies to other fields. Dreams and ambitions are not the driving force behind success. The driving force behind success is the small, often lonely steps you take today with your utmost effort. World-renowned tennis player Pete Sampras once said when asked about the secret to his success, I never try to win a match. I don't even try to win a set or a game. I just try to win a point. Don't worry for more than 10 minutes. Worrying doesn't solve problems. Taking a few days off at a quiet beach won't help either. We only have less than 10 minutes to think about any problem. Whatever your worries, write them down on paper. They'll surely only amount to a few lines. If you can't find a solution to those few lines in 10 minutes, it's not a problem you can solve. Yet, you stretch that 10 minutes into an hour, a day, a month, and waste a year. When your mind is complicated, most of the time, you know the solution, but are afraid to act on it. Don't confuse worries with problems. Worry means suffering and fretting in your mind, while a problem requires a solution. If worry stem from a problem, stop worrying and start addressing the problem. A friend of mine lost his job. He spent months worrying feeling his life was at a dead end, and drinking. The core of his worry was simple he couldn't find a job. Why? Was it because of the economy? Don't blame external factors, it's because he wasn't someone worth hiring. If that's the case, the solution becomes clear transform into someone worth hiring. Andrew Matthews said, I have never met anyone who gets up early, exercises, studies, and socializes as much as possible, yet says that nothing good happens in their life. Don't sigh just because you have many worries. Worries eat away at your soul. Identify the core of the problem, find a solution, and act on it. If you can't see a solution, ignore it. The result will be the same whether you worry or not. So, worry for only 10 minutes. Don't be intimidated by geniuses. People say hard work leads to success. If that's true, 
Could criminals achieve a 2,000% return on stocks by studying and working hard? When I was young, I really thought that if I just worked hard enough, I could become like a genius. But living in the real world, I found that such words usually come from those who are already born with 1% inspiration and it's more of an encouragement to make the rest of us feel a bit better. Even the dictionary defines a genius as an exceptional natural ability, and not as a result of hard work. Unfortunately, we often feel envious when our cousin buys land, especially if there's a genius nearby, we start feeling worthless, asking ourselves why we can't be like them, but don't be disappointed. Money isn't something only the 1% of born geniuses can earn. In a poker game, there are 2,598,960 different possible hands with 5 cards. Thus, the person with the best hand is one in about 2.6 million. However, you can still win at poker without having the best hand. You just need a slightly better hand than the other players at the table. So, ignore the geniuses with the best cards. Their poker games are filled with similar people. The key point is you don't need to be intimidated by the stories of geniuses. Making money is a game against other ordinary people, not against those far superior to you. To build wealth, you don't need divine talents, academic backgrounds, or certifications. If you want to walk the path to wealth, realize this quickly. Ultimately, it's a game with other ordinary people. Competing with ordinary people isn't that hard. Just compete with others in your field and win. While they're playing, don't play while they're sleeping. Sleep less. Save money while they're spending and look for opportunities. There's a clear reason why those who strive succeed. Stay alert, and take my words to heart. Ordinary people believe that without an academic background, connections, or capital, they can't succeed. Those without these things believe that trying is pointless, and give up from the start. These are the people around you, who look ahead from their current position and give up in advance. They dream of quick riches, showing an ignorant interest in celebrities, games, sports stars, luxury brands, and horse racing. The game you're playing is with these people. This is a joyful and fortunate fact for you. It's like being in a war where your enemies have already decided not to fight, and have laid down their weapons. In such a battle, you don't need guns a bow or a book will do. You don't need anything grand, a shiny academic background, or a lot of capital. Understand this quickly. Your competition in becoming wealthy isn't geniuses, but ultimately your own willpower. Keep this very simple fact engraved in your heart. Eliminate the root of stress. People often hear advice like, don't rush, the world won't end if you don't do it today. Live relaxed, abandon competition, skill and ability aren't everything. Live slowly that's the way to avoid stress. If you follow such advice faithfully, I can assure you that in a few years, you might have a healthy body. But your work will probably have failed long ago, or you'll have been fired and become a healthy unemployed person carrying several resumes. Some might still say health is the most important. They'll say you lose everything if you lose your health. That's true, but it doesn't mean you gain everything if you keep your health. Look at the core of the problem. Why does stress occur? 
Because problems arise, where do those problems come from? Work or human relationships, stress comes from unresolved issues in work or relationships. Why aren't the problems solved? Because you don't read or study, why don't people study? Because they're lazy and think their own judgment and thoughts are the best. Like a frog in a well, they don't read even one book a month, but find all the time to play. Yet they think they're diligent and hardworking, blaming their stress on their surroundings and complaining about low income. The right attitude is to tackle problems head on. If you leave the problem, and only try to relieve the stress it causes, the root remains. Some people say to take enough rest and relax, others say to laugh. Stop saying foolish things, no matter how much you laugh, the problem won't be solved. Remember, you use weed killer to kill the root. If the root remains, weeds will grow back. The most accurate way to eliminate stress is to identify the root cause of the problem and remove it entirely. I assure you that all these causes are your ignorance of how to solve problems arising from work or relationships. It's not the external situations that cause stress, but your ignorance of how to navigate those external situations, and the root of that ignorance is laziness. Don't stack empty beer bottles thinking you're relieving stress. Face the problem head on. Don't avoid it. Read books and find methodologies. That's the weed killer for stress. Stop consulting with friends. You and your friends are both stressed. You might get some minor comfort for the frustration deep in your heart. But in the end, it's like comparing acorns. The author of today's content, Sino, means no to what we believe and live correctly.